This is a video about building a very simple solar model. And here's the issue. When you build solar models, they shouldn't be too complex because the technology is really not very complex. Getting them overly complex is kind of idiotic. Now, what we're going to do is show you the importance of financing. Just because the models are simple, that doesn't mean that uh, it's easy to win a solar deal, it's either make a solar project or anything else. And what we're going to talk about here is three different ways, shift control seven, shift control, three different ways to compute the levelized cost of electricity. One is just from a, a, a target goal seek in a financial model. Another one is from NPV of revenues divided by NPV of generation. Okay. And uh, a third one is using just costs. You don't even need a PPA price or anything else. But it's very tricky to get right. So LCOE uh, from cost analysis. Now when we do all of this, we're going to show you, and this is horrible. It's just horrible. The crimes committed against Africa demanding that they, they build solar models and then trying to steal money in terms of EPC costs and then even worse uh, whoops uh, uh, taking these really really high uh, carrying charge rates and then ending up charging a price that's enormous okay so we're going to uh, work through different uh, various different issues. The big deal is really of, of this video is that all three uh, all three methods produce the same kind of rate now. It's not an accident. I started with, um, with a PPA price of 160 US dollars per megawatt hour. This is what a Chinese company gets for a solar project in, in uh, Ghana. Now, I've been told that 1000 is about the right price for solar. These, If it's a red uh, thing, it comes from the red sheet. Okay, and we'll make this sheet some kind of, uh, how about a purple sheet? Okay, so we'll show you where that eventually this LCOE you see that's a purple number because that's going to come from our financial model now the the point about all of these LCOE uh, uh, methods is that they all if you want to kind of prove things they all use the uh, project IRR not the equity IRR. That's if you want to make them all equal, you just use the project IRR. And we'll work uh, kind of through it. Okay, so uh, going through the model, <laughs> it's absolutely simple, really. Uh, we have a PPA price that changes now. Here's what really irritates me. I'm being a, asked, a, a, a bad person here. When you put some, when you use a lookup function, don't use the F4 key. Set it up clearly and, and just use the entire thing. So if you want to use this, put lookup. Okay, and then look up the year if you want. Here, the year, the period, and then click on entire row of uh, set it up clearly. This could be with dates, of course, or anything else. And then use Shift Control R. Use the generic macros, please. Nobody does, but you know. And then you get a project IRR that's criminal, criminal, of 24% for for solar. Okay, nobody needs that much 
It's just stealing. We just another. There's no other word. Uh, or maybe recolonization. Okay, that's what uh, you get, and that's where you should stop. Now, uh, you can put a. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, here we just put eighty percent debt financing. Let's let's put seventy percent. Let's be. Okay, and the repayment here, we can uh, use a payment function equal PPMT if you want. You first uh, put a, a little uh, a thing that says, okay, take the year and make it less than or equal to the the, the tenor of the debt. Shift Control R, Shift Control T, Shift Control F. Okay, and then you. Uh, but if it's true, then put PPMT and click on the rate, F4, which is another criminal rate. Uh, put the uh, number of periods here. No, I'm sorry, the period of the model. No F4. Put the number of periods with the F4 function. And if you want it to show up as a... Uh, 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 positive number, put a minus sign, and then, okay, shift control R, and if you don't like these uh, falses at, at the end, you just multiply the whole thing by one, <coughs> shift control R, shift, shift control one, repayment, shift control one, how's that? And we have the closing balance, and finally the interest, which is the interest rate multiplied by the opening balance. And then we put our little simple cash flow statement in, no taxes in this one. Okay, and see what kind of equity we get, and we get 44% <laughs> return, even, even if they use such a high interest rate on everything else. Okay? Now, if we want to compute the, the, the levelized cost of electricity, one way to do it is to figure out what the EBITDA is. Where's the EBITDA? And divide that by the total CapEx. That's the, the payment. That's the carrying charge factor. Now, can you look at the... the uh, in this case, it's, it seems to be exactly the same as the project IRR. It's not exactly the same. It's just because the IRR is so high that it's, it's almost identical. Now, we could also have computed the carrying charge factor as taking, uh, uh, put PPM, PMT, the payment function, and for the rate, here's the big deal. Uh, uh, let's, let's put a... A uh, LCOM input. And the first thing we put is the project IRR. And let's get that ridiculous project IRR. The real uh, our project. Okay. Shift control P. Now, when we have this project IRR, uh, uh, we can get a payment function. Okay, this is EBIT PA divided by cost. This is one way to kind of get it. Okay, why don't I backwards? Payment is we put equal PMT and we get the project return, we put the number of years of the project we had, which was right here, and then we put a, a minus one. And that gives us this that gives us the same as the just about the same as the project IR. Look, it's not exactly the same. Okay? And then if we wanted to compute the LCOE, all we do is we go and we take the 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 capital cost in this case. So we take the capital cost of the per kilowatt of the project 
and then uh, multiply that by the, the carrying charge rate add any fixed cost. Now we didn't inflate the fixed cost, so that'll be a... we would have to levelize that a little bit if we inflated that, and the EBITDA wouldn't be exactly the same. There'd be some issues, and that's really the, this one. Now that gives you the, the, the co carrying cost per year, okay, and then we're going to divide that by uh, 8760 times the uh, capacity factor. Okay, that's if we're already kind of given a, a, a thing, and then we have to multiply it by a thousand because we want this stated in, in USD per kilowatt hour, and that's what this does. Maybe I should, okay, okay, so, you know, I think maybe it would have been good to put a carrying... cost. Okay, and the carrying cost is again the, the total cost of the project multiplied by the, the uh, carrying charge rate. We could use this one e either way. If we use the EBITDA function, we oh, I actually go to the other one. We have to do a le little levelization. Could put a tiny bit more involved. Okay, that's our, our, our cost. And then we can put our hours. And our hours run are the, the 8760 8, times the capacity factor. And this is carrying cost. This is USD per kilowatt, not per megawatt, per dash year. And then our hours are in hours. So if we want this L simple LCOE in USD per megawatt hour, we would uh, take this one, multiply it by a thousand. That gives you megawatt per year, and you divide it by hours to get megawatt per hour. And to get this, you can use formula text. I used I used to show you how to how to do it yourself. Okay, and that way we have the first method. Now the second method, which I've uh, uh, suggested in other videos, is you take the NPV of the revenues and you divide them by the NPV of the generation. Now to prove this whole thing works. It works as long as you use the project uh, discount rate. So let's take the NPV at the project rate of all of the revenues. Okay. And then let's take the NPV at the project discount rate of all the generation, and then divide the one by the other, and we get exactly the same number. Now, the third method is we could simply, and I'm, maybe I'll just talk through this one. You take the NPV of the OPEX, and then you take the NPV of the CAPEX, uh, the OPEX. You start in the, the first column, the capex, just put it straight there. Then we got the NPV of the cost, which is just the sum. Why don't I... I don't know why we had to sum that. I was probably teaching how to use the all to equal. Then we have the same NPV of the generation, and we get the same number. Now, here's the real issue. Okay. First, let's put a less idiotic discount rate. Now, the one good news is, instead of having Power Africa and some kind of crap, total U.S., total crap, Germany came in and said, okay, we'll give you a 3% interest rate. Actually, 2.5%, I think. KFW. Wonderful. And then, uh, uh, 
they said, okay, let's uh, finance this thing at, um, uh, let's finance this thing at 85%. And then let's say, let's get some reasonable investors who will accept an 8% return. And then we press the gold seek, and the gold seek just says, okay, now our, instead of 160, we need 54. That's how much money we need. We need 5.4 cents per kilowatt hour if we do those kind of uh, rates. And then we get the same thing. We get the same number, but what the big thing we had to do to get that number is to figure out what that project IRR was. Now, I don't see how you could get that project IR without, uh, 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 without kind of going through everything. And let's put a 25-year debt. Let's put a really long-term debt in. And let's just, so I don't see, uh, let me restate that. I don't see how you could get that unless you kind of figured out what the project IRR should be by making a whole model. Now, our, our, uh, our, price, PPA price, or whatever you want to call it, feed-in tariff, is now it's four cents. That's what it should be. Sixteen cents versus four cents. That's a big difference. Now, once we have, if we have this kind of carrying charge rate, notice this time the carrying charge rate is very different in the, in the two models. Then we can put that in and compare different technologies. And solar wins. Solar beats the other, well, okay, as long as you don't spend too much, which is another problem. You can, here's how much they were spending on hydro. Here's how much they were spending on NGCC. It beats the NGCC by a big margin, and it, not only that, it beats it because they had to pay so much for natural gas that it beats just running the natural gas. It, it beats the variable cost. Let's go back and do our other one where we were before. Let's put a, you know, a 70% debt in, and let's put an interest rate of 10% in. In fact, I should uh, go back and I did something very bad by, by uh, taking it from here. And let's say, okay, our equity IRR right now is none, but let's uh, press our button. And we get 8%, but they needed 44%, of course. <laughs> then our carrying charge rate is so high that the solar loses to the gas, even in a good case. And if you have to spend more, it loses by a wide margin. There's our 160, and I, I forgot to also change back the, 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 that tenant. Okay, we've just been through this very quickly, but hopefully you can get, you know, if you're dealing with these kind of solar issues, you don't have to make complicated models. Now I'm going to put this model, oops, I'm going to, oh shoot, I'm going to put this model in the, I'm going to call it solar LCOE. Since it's relevant to a couple of things, I'm going to put it in a couple of places. I've got solar resource and financial analysis. I'm going to put it there. And we'll also put it in kind of integrated distribution and generation analysis. That's where we're going to uh, put the file. Okay.